Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am so happy to be with you again on a Tuesday for yet another author interview. I'm very excited to bring you this one. This author interview is with uh, Carrie Bove, who is the author of, among other novels, Grace in the Wings. This is the first in a new series that she's writing uh, called the Grace Michelle Mystery Series. And it is, if you're a regular listener to the podcast, then you know that I really like historical fiction. And this this one's set in 1920 in New York, so a very fun time period. It reminded me a little bit of Murder Knocks Twice that we, uh, I spoke with Susanna Culkins of, hmm, I don't know, I want to say a couple weeks ago, could have been a couple months ago for all I have a sense of time anymore. But um <sighs> That one was set in 1929 in Chicago, so I don't know. It's as my dad used to say, it's exactly the same, only different. (laughs) It's not the same, but it's kind of it's a little bit that same time period. You get the um, it was just an interesting time for women from something as as frivolous as fashion when you know women started bobbing their hair, which was actually a big thing, to wearing they, they went from wearing like ankle length dresses some to to above the knee dresses sometimes i mean it was just it was this very fascinating time period and then as the 20s progressed and we get to 1929 and then the depression in the 30s and all i don't know it's just it's fascinating to me so i'm gonna stop babbling because you know you can probably wikipedia it and find out more about the 20s but this book grace in the wings let me give you the description new york city 1920 grace michelle has everything she wants a home, a family, and a future career as a costume designer for the famed showman Florence Zigfield, Zigfield Jr.'s Zigfield Follies. Pretty good for a girl who once lived on the streets of New York City. But when her sister Sophia, the star of the show, is murdered, Grace's safe and protected life is shattered. War veteran Chet Riker has made it a practice to keep his distance from others. Love, after all, leads only to pain. But Chet has a problem. A big one. He's become indebted to mob boss Joe Marciano in an attempt to save his estranged mother's life. Marciano wants him to pay up or else. So desperate to get the money, Chet contacts former client Florence Zigfield Jr. for work. Soon, Chet finds himself playing bodyguard for introverted Grace, who has reluctantly agreed to be Zigfield's new leading lady, on the condition that Zigfield promises to find Sophia's killer. Upon meeting Grace, Chet quickly finds his hardened theory that love equals pain tested. Grace, meanwhile, is swept up in a life she never wanted, both as the Follies star and as the pawn in a series of publicity stunts during a transcontinental train trip to California that puts her life at risk. Who would want her and Sophia dead? Together, she and Chet must confront publicity-hungry Zigfield, power-driven Marciano, and their own past to find Sophia's killer and let themselves love once again. How can you not think that's fascinating? I mean, that is the, the, I love detailed descriptions like that. So you get a really good idea of what this book is about. It is obviously a mystery. We knew that from the beginning, but mysteries are, historical fiction mysteries are fascinating to me because they're historical fiction and I love reading about certain, you know, time periods, different time periods. This one is even more fascinating to me because in, you know, in historical fiction, you often have run-ins with real people, with historical characters. In this one, there are several characters who are more than just cameos. They are, Florence Zigfield Jr. is a pretty major character in this book. And so to take someone who 
is fairly well known. You can look him up and find pictures and read about his life and have him be a fairly major character, I think is so interesting. And I wanted to ask Carrie approximately 8 million questions about all the different actual historical figures who appear in the book from um, uh, George Gershwin to W.C. Fields, uh, just on and on. I mean, there's there's so many, and I wanted to just sit down and ask her 8 billion questions, but that would have made for a um, 8 billion hour long podcast, and nobody has time for that. So <laughs> this book is great. I loved the characters. I loved the setting. I loved the historical period. I loved learning about the follies, which I had heard of, but never really delved into talking to Carrie about research, etc. So um, again, the book is Grace in the Wings. I do have uh, copies to give away. So stay tuned until the end of the podcast to find out how you can win a copy of the first Grace Michelle mystery, Grace in the Wings by Carrie Bove. Let's go ahead and let Carrie talk about her book and I will stop gushing and babbling. Let's go ahead and turn to that interview. Carrie, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I am very excited to have you here uh, to talk about your new book, which is called Grace in the Wings. It's a Grace Michelle mystery. Before we get to the book, though, I would love to get to know you just a little bit. So if you could share whatever you would like to share about yourself. Well, yeah, I guess uh, I've been writing for a long, long time. I've been writing stories since I was, you know, very young, like in the third grade, and um, have just really found the medium to be um, a great outlet, um, you know, an emotional outlet, an intellectual outlet. I love reading. I love writing. And so um, it just seemed natural that one day I would write a novel, and um, I wrote my first novel in 1990, and that one is Under the Bed, Where It Shall Remain, but um, <laughs> yeah, and so I've I've been writing for a long time. I'm also, my other passion is horses, and I've had horses most of my life. I've um, competed with horses. I've done, you know, practically every discipline um, with horses, and they're just a huge part of my life, and I can't imagine my life without them. So those are the two, my two passions that have been kind of lifelong passions. And I've had other interests along the way, but those two are the ones that have kind of stuck. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Um, what kind of horses do you have? I, mean, I don't know a lot about horses, but... I have, um, I have four horses. I have two of them are Arabian quarter horse crosses. And the other two are Arabian saddlebred crosses. And yes, the common denominator is Arabian. I have always loved Arabian horses. They're beautiful for one thing, and they're smart and sensitive and just they're great, great companions. And um, that's kind of been really my only exposure to my own horses. I would like to try a different breed at some point, but uh, that's going to have to wait a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I know it's um not the uh it's it's kind of an expensive hobby from what I've heard. It's an expensive hobby, yes, and especially when you get into the showing. I haven't done any showing for about four years now um, because I've sort of been focusing on the writing career, and so I haven't really been in the show ring much. And it it's you know it's helped financially but still there's the care and feeding and I always find things to do with my horses that seem to cost money <laughs> I just bought a very expensive saddle it's just kind of like it never ends yes I'm sure um but let's go ahead and, and now switch our attention to the book it is called as I said grace in the wings can you give me a quick overview of the book yeah it uh, takes place in 1920, it takes place on Broadway, the Ziegfeld Follies, and my protagonist is a costume designer. She's very shy, very introverted, and uh, the star of the show, her sister, Sophia Michelle, dies mysteriously, and in order to find the murderer, Grace has to step into the, you know, the Broadway onto the Broadway stage and 
um, you know, become a star in order to find the murder. So that is basically, in a nutshell, what it's about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, well, I'm going to get to that soon. But so, what was your initial inspiration for the story? Well, I've always been really fascinated with show business, and I think it stemmed from you know when I was a young girl. I loved watching those old movies, um, like the old black and white movies from the early 1930s. And one of the films that I saw was The Great Ziegfeld. And it was starring uh, Myrna Loy and, um, oh, who was it? Myrna Loy and William Powell. And Fanny Bryce was in it and playing herself. And I was so impressed by the elaborateness of the set and um, all the mechanical moving pieces, there were horses, there were feathers, there were, you know, bubble machines and all these wonderful things. And then, of course, the costuming was incredible. And uh, Ziegfeld was kind of known for his over-the-top um, costumes and sets. And um, so I had, I had wanted to write, uh, I started Grace in the Wings under a different title many years ago, and then I, I started it as a romance. I thought I wanted to write a romance, but um, I really wanted to write mystery. But, you know, life got in the way, you know, things started happening, so I put it aside for a while. And then actually one of the horse trainers that I had um, several years ago, she and I were sitting around one day, at, you know, having a glass of wine, and she told me that her mother was a Ziegfeld girl. And oh, I, wow. I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. I, I kind of didn't believe her. <laughs> and so I started researching and I didn't I didn't find anything on her mother although I do believe her mother was one, but um in the research of this woman, I started finding out all this amazing stuff about these Ziegfeld girls and how many actors and actresses got their start with him. Um you know, names that we see all the time uh got started with Florence Ziegfeld back in, you know, I think he started in 19, I think it was 1910, 1909, 1910, and he, you know, did his shows till he died in 1936. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I was fascinated by the, the how many people and, and what he did in his career. So I am going to jump in here so we can take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking more about the uh, historical characters who appear in the book. There will be a little bit more gushing on my part, but thankfully not as much as when it's just me talking because I ask the questions and try to move on. So (laughs) stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Carrie Bove about her new Grace Michelle mystery entitled Grace in the Wings. Let's go ahead and get back to that interview. The book is uh, peopled, if you will, with a ton of historical figures, which often happens with historical fiction. But um, I kept I kept Googling people to see, like, <laughs> is this a real person? Am I remembering this correctly? You know, and to learn a little bit more about them. So it was really fun for me because... I'm kind of a history nerd in that way. And so I get to learn all sorts of things about that period and about different actors and actresses. You know, Um, that's one of the things that I love so much when people tell me that when they read my books, they're like, oh, I just had to go research this person and that person. Because it's, you know, it's great to entertain, and but it's also great to educate, and it's great to get people excited about the characters in your book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Grace, who is the main character. What do you think uh, about her character will resonate with your readers? 
Well, uh, she is a fictional character. I made her up, and I really wanted to um, explore the idea of um, a creative person. And uh, I know a lot of creatives, and um, they're very many of them are very introverted, and they're all about the work, and uh, they're not really that much about you know being around people and, and all of that, that's not really what turns them on. What, what they really want to do is immerse themselves in the work. And so um, I, you know, made her this very shy and introverted, rather protected person and put her into a situation that was kind of like, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen to her? Um, and just started exploring with that. And I think that a lot of people will... Um, will relate to the the feelings of, you know, having a dream but not sure how to get to that dream, having that dream put on hold, um, having to sacrifice yourself for the sake of someone else, and kind of just that whole premise behind, um, you know, just the art. And um, I think people will, will resonate with that. Any specifically creative people, but also people, you know, people, everyone's creative, really, but um, people who work in creative fields, I think, will Mm -hmm. kind of appreciate that. Yeah. And Grace, as you mentioned, is fictional, but as I also mentioned, there's a a lot of um, actual people throughout this book. How was it writing? I mean, often when you're reading historical fiction, you get um, historical figures who just kind of make little cameos, right. but you've got a historical figure as uh, kind of a you know a major part of the story with uh, Flo Zingfield. So how was it writing um, a fictional story about real people? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's um, it's a lot of fun. It's and it's a little challenging because it's you know you kind of you want to stick with the facts, but for the sake of the story you kind of have to massage them a little bit. And um, it's always a little bit tricky because you don't want to falsely represent someone, but at the same time, do we really know what that person was all about? Do we really know what their fears were, what their hopes were, um, what they thought, how they felt about things? We know about them through what they said and, of course, what they did in history, but... I'm kind of intrigued with <clears throat> kind of getting really behind what their motivations were and um, if they were actually very nice people or not very nice people. Um, so that's something that I found challenging but in a good way. And um, I would take, you know, a character like Flo Ziegfeld, read quite a bit about him, and then so I inferred a lot of things. And it's not an exact representation of him, but it is close. I mean, I think it's mm-hmm. believable, you know, um, people can kind of get behind what I was trying to do here with him. Yeah. yeah. And then the the character of, of Sophia, Grace's sister, is married to Jack Pickford, who was a real person, sister of Mary Pickford, who was an actress, and he was actually married to someone um, who died suddenly, but it's not Sophia. So um, talk about about that process of kind of, well, creating a new person. Is Olive Thomas, right? Yeah. Yes, and she was the inspiration for Sophia. I read her story, and I was just like, wow, this is so cool. It was one of the very first publicized Hollywood scandals. And um, she was, you know, this beautiful, beautiful girl, but wild beyond belief, and um, ended up dying mysteriously. She was married to Jack Pickford, um, and there was always, you know, her death was sort of always this pall that hung over him because, you know, some people thought that um, she committed suicide because he, you know, he wouldn't stop cheating on her. Others thought that she might have ended her life because um, he gave her syphilis. Um, Hmm. And then others thought that perhaps she was murdered. She had just taken out a huge life insurance policy. And, um, but, you know, the coroner ruled the death accidental uh, 
by poisoning. She ingested some mercury bichloride, which was found in a um, cleaning solution in this uh, Paris hotel, but also was part was um, he was taking tablets of mercury bichloride for his syphilis. So, you know, there was never really any concrete um, evidence on how she died. And, mm-hmm. of course, he was, you know, part of the very famous Pickford family, and so it was just kind of, it was just a big, huge scandal. And I thought it was really, um, really kind of entertaining and exciting, so I decided to base Sophia on Olive Thomas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just I found that fascinating, and I, I I kept getting bogged down in how would I do that and what would I include, you know, like <laughs> they, I sometimes I sometimes I think too much. <laughs> I get it, I do too. <laughs> what kind of uh, it sounds like you you did a lot. What kind of research did you do for the book? Well, I did. I found a wonderful book. It was it's like a huge coffee table book that has tons of information on all the Ziegfeld girls and the follies and the shows. And I think it was, there was either a foreword by Ziegfeld's daughter, uh, his daughter with Billy Burke, or she, uh, I think she might have even co-written it. And so I thought that was a very credible source. I've done a lot of research on the Internet. Um, I picked up some books on, a book on Lillian Lorraine, who was a prominent figure in Ziegfeld's life. He, um, you know, she was his mistress and uh, ruined one of his, marriages and almost ruined the other but um and so i i read a book on her and um you know just kind of poked around and found things um yeah libraries that that uh, coffee table book though was my biggest uh that was the biggest resource yeah and one of the things that i discovered in my googling for people who are listening was that um uh billy bryce am i remembering that correctly Fanny Bryce. His wife. Fanny, no, sorry, Billy, Billy Burke. Oh, Billy Burke, yeah. Billy Burke was, is best known, and maybe I'm getting everything mixed up, but best known as play, for playing Glinda in The Wizard of Oz. Yes. Um, yes, so she's actually, you know, I, I think would be fairly well known to even people of this generation because that movie is still so popular. Absolutely, and several of the um, actors in that movie, Ray Bolger and I think there was another one, maybe Burt Williams, I'm not sure, they got their start with Florence Sigfield too. So, yeah, okay. so, like I said, you know, these, these names that we are so familiar with, um, yeah, they got their start with him. But, and Billy Burke was she, was, she started out on stage. She wasn't, you know, a quote-unquote Sigfield girl. She was, you know, a serious actress. And um, she got into motion pictures fairly early on in their uh, relationship. But yeah, it was a it was a tumultuous relationship, but I think it was also a very good relationship. Sorry to interrupt once again, but let's go ahead and take our second break of the podcast so we can come back and finish this interview with Carrie Bove about her new book, Grace in the Wings. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Today I am speaking with Carrie Bove about her new Grace Michelle mystery. It's called Grace in the Wings. Let's go ahead and get back to that interview. 
when, whenever I think of the Ziegfeld Follies, I keep picturing the Moulin Rouge. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. But can you can you give maybe a, a bit of a description of the Ziegfeld Follies so people listening have more of an idea? I mean, I know it was on Broadway, but it's kind of this over the top production. Right, and I think it was based on uh, the Follies Berger. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, in France, and so Ziegfeld spent some time in France. He was connected with a, a Parisian actress named Anna Held, and she was performing on stage in, in, in these over-the-top production type of things, and he was trying to make it as a showman, and he, he discovered a man by the name of um, Sandow, the great Sandow, and he was like a, a muscle man. And um, that's how he started, that's how he got his start, was kind of taking this guy around um, and having him perform these great feats of strength. And, of course, the women loved him. And so between that and his relationship with Anna Held and also um, his father, he grew up, his father had an acting and dance school. And so that's kind of where he got the, the bug for show business. And so he just dreamt up this incredible series of shows and reviews, and they just kept growing and growing and growing. And um, it was just one of those things that I don't think Broadway has seen had seen before or since, because it was just so huge. Yeah, that, that that's it's just, it's just it's fascinating to even picture. I mean, they've got you've got the moving columns and things that you wouldn't even that that would be more complicated to do in 1920 than they would be now with all the moving parts on stage right. and, and, and they had everything. quite an elaborate system of you know pulleys and cranks and all kinds of things that they did to make that magic happen on the stage, and you know, like I said, you know, bubble machines and all these things that we didn't even wouldn't even have known they were invented then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But he just had an extreme vision, a fantasy. It was a complete fantasy. Yeah. On the cover of the book, uh it is listed as a Grace Michelle mystery. Do you plan on more mysteries with Grace? I do. Yes. I I want to start um working on the second book. Here in the next few months, and it's going to—I know it's going to take place in Los Angeles in the um, the film industry that was just sort of getting going uh, there. And she's gone on to become a costume designer for the films. So I think that's going to be really fun. I don't really know what's going to happen yet. I kind of have an idea of the setting and sort of what's going to happen, but I I can't say because I don't know enough yet. But yes, I <laughs> right. have a couple of Grace Michelle books planned, and we'll just, you know, we'll just see how it goes. I have two, no, I think I have two others planned, and then we'll just see where it takes me. Right. See if she keeps talking to you and right. needing more books. Yeah. <laughs> That's exciting. Um, this is not your first novel. It's not your debut novel. Are there any of your other books that you would like to talk about? Sure. I um I have another series that is the Annie Oakley mystery series and I took the character, the fictional um historical figure of Annie Oakley and created a fictional character out of her and she is solving uh crimes in the Wild West show. And the first book of that series is called Girl with a Gun. And it talks about when she, it sort of centers around when she started with the show. Um, she was 15 years old, and she won a shooting contest with against Frank Butler, who was uh, a traveling kind of, um, traveling show on his own. But for the sake of my story, I put him in the Wild West show, and then they meet and fall in love, and she becomes this, famous star and then her she has a a native american assistant who helps her and makes her costumes and the assistant dies mysteriously and so she sets out to solve that murder and then i wrote a prequel novella to that book called shoot like a girl and that 
is just a 40,000 uh, word novella, and it highlights a time in Annie Oakley's life that was particularly difficult for her. She was, um, her family was poor, her father died when she was young, and so to help make ends meet, her mother sent her to the Dark County Infirmary, which was a poorhouse, but it also trained young women and young men to help other families so that they could make money for their own family. And so she learned to cook and sew and all that. And she was farmed out to a family who she never named in real life. Um, she only referred to them as the wolves. And hmm. they were not very kind to her. And she, ha- she spent a horrendous year with them. And like I said, she never spoke about it. So I thought, wow, I could really play with that. And in my Annie Oakley series, Annie Oakley has a horse that she is very bonded with and is part of her act. And this, this story, Shoot Like a Girl, sort of entails how she came to meet Buck and how they became so bonded. And it also launched her on a path to fighting for truth and justice. So there's that. And then the second book in this series is called Peccadillo at the Palace, And that is when the Wild West show traveled to England in 1887 to uh, partake in Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee celebrations, and they performed for the Queen. And um, in my story, when they're on the ship on the way over, they they took you know all of their whole show over, which was quite a monumental task. But anyways, in my story, one of the Queen's assistants who's been sent over to escort them, he dies mysteriously. And also Annie's husband, Frank Butler, falls mysteriously ill. And I bring in a lot of the Irish politics and the Indian, East Indian politics that were going on in England at that time as part of the whole murder mystery. And, um, yeah, and then I'm working on the third novel, which is called Folly at the Fair, and it's when... Uh, Buffalo Bill's Wild West show um, goes to Chicago to the Columbian Exhibition in 1893, um, and they performed there for four or five months. Fascinating. So I'm definitely noticing a bit of a theme in terms of um, female protagonists solving mysteries and um, showmanship in there. Strong female protagonists. I, um, I have a blog that is called Empowered Women in History, and um, I really like writing about women who were sort of mavericks of their time and who were working in a man's world or a very difficult world, a world that was unconventional for women and, you know, making their mark. Yeah, I love that. Um, So... You said you you've been writing forever. That you know you you wrote stories as a kid. How did you then get into writing fiction? Um, well, I it started in college. I was able to. I majored in English literature and with an emphasis in creative writing. And I managed to somehow get all of my coursework completed by my junior year. And so I was able to take independent studies, and I took three independent studies that I was able to create for myself, and one of them was a short story um, independent study, another was a playwriting independent study, and another was uh, screenwriting. And so I got to be one-on-one with my professors in uh, creating these courses and then, of course, doing the coursework. So that's kind of what got it started. And then I graduated from college and realized, you know, I couldn't make a living writing fiction. And so I worked as a technical writer for a Fortune 500 company, a research and development kind of IT company, and did that for a while. But then it was when I had uh, my first child, my husband and I made the decision that I would stay home. And I was so glad I did it, but I was starved for intellectual <laughs> an intellectual <laughs> outlet. And I thought, I'm going to I'm going to see if I can write a novel. So that's when it started. Oh, nice. Thank you. Um, And actually, you're the second person I've spoken to recently that started writing when their their first child was young. Um, So definitely 
definitely a, a, a process, for, you know, that right. I, I've encountered before. Um, do you have advice then for aspiring authors? I do. I would say, um, first of all, write what you really, really want to write. People sometimes, especially when they're starting out, they're like, I want to write a book that's going to sell. And that's great. And um, we all need to kind of keep in mind what the marketplace has you know, going on. But if you're not invested in your own story, nobody else is going to be. So if you, you, know, if you want to write historical fiction and you think that you, you, know, you should be writing, I don't know, contemporary romance, but your heart's not in it, um, it's going to reflect in, in the work. So I would say that, and then, you know, it's a tough business. There's a lot of rejection and criticism, and you need to believe in yourself and believe in your craft and believe in your passion, and don't give up. You know, it's really hard. There's been many, many times where I was just like, man, I am just wasting my time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But because it's a passion, it just doesn't go away. And so... If I, you know, if I were on my deathbed and I hadn't pursued this, no matter what the outcome, I would, I would be really unhappy. So, mm-hmm. okay. yeah. Thank you. Um, when you take time to read, do you have favorite authors or genres? Yes, I I read a lot of historical fiction and historical mystery because that's just that's one of the reasons I wanted to write it was because I love to read it and. Um, I and I also like, you know, I also like contemporary mystery and um like more literary style of works, but my favorite I think some of the inspirations um that I've had have been um re, uh an author named Reese Bowen. She writes historical mystery. She has a Molly Murphy series and then a um Royal Spinus series, and I also enjoy <clears throat> a writer named Stephanie Barron. She also writes as Francine Matthews, and she writes both historical fiction, and she she started um, years ago, she wrote a mystery series using Jane Austen as the amateur sleuth, and I loved those books. I thought oh, that was wow. so exciting. <laughs> Yeah, and um, who else? Uh, I like Deanna Rayburn's books a lot, and she writes historical uh, mystery and historical fiction. I'm a big Philippa Gregory fan. fan. It's Philippa or Philippa Gregory. She writes all the the Tudor novels, you know, The Other Boleyn Girl and, Mm -hmm. you know, The White Princess and The White Queen and all of those books. And, um, yeah, I really, really enjoy historical fiction. Yeah, me too. Um, and now, now I I need to check out the Jane Austen mysteries yeah, because it's got to be yeah. <laughs> it's got to be better than Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, which yes, I did read. <laughs> um, do you have a website? Um, where what is the website address, and where can people find you on social media? Okay, uh, the website is carriebove dot com. Pretty straightforward. K A R I. B as in boy, O, V as in Victor, E-E dot com. And I'm on Instagram as Carrie Beauvais underscore writer. And then Facebook is Carrie Beauvais. I've got a profile and then an author page. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter, although I don't use Twitter that often. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, as we are coming to the end of, of my prepared questions, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to mention now about uh, the book or your other novels? Anything that we haven't covered? Um, well, I would just say they're they're all um, for sale on Amazon, and the Annie Oakley books are also for sale on other platforms. And I love to do book clubs one of my very favorite things to do um i've done them remotely and i've done them in person and it's just so fun to connect with readers on such a personal level um it it really i really do enjoy that because the you know 
the bottom line is I'm doing this because I want to connect. You know, I really like to find like-minded people and, you know, exchange ideas and things like that. So, yeah, I think that's probably all that I'd want to say. All right. Well, thank you so much, and thank you especially for taking the time to talk to me th- th- today about your new book, Grace in the Wings, as well as your Annie Oakley series. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you once again to Carrie for joining me to talk about her books. I have a quick aside before we wrap things up. Uh, Her name is spelled, as you see in the title, K-A-R-I, which is how my sister's name is spelled, but her name is pronounced Kari. So whenever I look at the book and I see K-A-R-I, my brain automatically thinks Kari. So if I said Kari at any point in this interview, I do apologize when I look at the name. That's just what my brain says. Um, So Carrie, if I pronounced your name incorrectly at any point during this interview, I do apologize. And uh, my sister would very much understand getting the name mispronounced because hers gets mispronounced Carrie all the time. So at any rate, thank you once again to Carrie for joining me. Thank you as always to you, my listeners, for joining me for these interviews. I hope you enjoy listening to them as much as I enjoy getting to do them. They are so much fun. I just love listening to authors and getting to know a little bit of their story and finding out just the various parts of their process and their craft as they write these books for us to enjoy. As I said at the beginning, I do have um, some giveaway copies. So if you would like to win a copy of Grace in the Wings, you just have to go to social media, GSMC Book Review, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and comment on this episode. Episode 183, Interview with Carrie Bove. And this week, since we have a historical um, fiction mystery, tell me your favorite or preferred historical time period for historical fiction. I'm nosy and I want to know. So just go to uh, GSMC Book Review, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and comment on the post with this episode, episode 183, Interview with Carrie Bove, and you will be entered to win a copy of Grace in the Wings. Thank you so much again for joining me for this episode of the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Please join me again on Friday when I have another historical fiction mystery. It's been a fun week and with some um, surprising similarities. And yet, again, exactly the same, only different. (laughs) That is with author Bradley Harper for the second of his Margaret Harkness books book, uh, Margaret Harkness Mysteries. That is a series and this one is called The Queen's Gambit. So join me for that discussion with Bradley Harper. In the meantime, I hope you are having a wonderful week. I I hope you continue to have a wonderful week and I hope as always that you find time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.